Well, welcome to the podcast, Allison. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing good. Excited to chat today. Uh, excited to have you on. Um, so tell us a little bit about what we're going to be talking about uh, before we get into uh, a little bit more about who you are. Yeah, so I'd love to talk to you about marketing your group practice um, pre-COVID and post-COVID because um, there's a little bit um, different strategies happening right now in our new world that we're living in. So I'm excited to share all of that with you. Awesome. So glad to have you on. And before we get into that, uh, as always, I like to ask my guests a little bit about what is your origin story? You know, let us all know uh, who you are and what you do and always love to hear how you got started doing what you're doing now. Yeah, great question. So I uh, am a trained clinician. I'm a licensed professional counselor in the state of Pennsylvania, and I was working my way up the ladder at a community mental health facility and long story short, got super burned out. And somebody suggested to me that I go into private practice. Um, and so I did and uh, started it out just solo practice and then realized that um, I was kind of lonely and the idea of building a group practice seemed exciting to me. Um, I had been the director of an outpatient clinic at the community mental health agency. So I did have uh, management experience and I had actually really enjoyed that piece of it. So started hiring um, in the beginning, it was 1099 contractors and just kept building and renting more space. And now we have 15 therapists. Um, wow. We have three, three locations, although none of them are being used right now because of COVID. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, I have officially retired from seeing clients. Um, I went on maternity leave about a year ago and decided to stop seeing clients at that time. And so I really just function as the CEO of the practice. Very and cool. then I do business consulting through Practice the Practice. Um, and about a year and a half ago, I started a virtual assistant company called Move Forward Virtual Assistants, which... Um, is run by somebody else. Um, that's a question I get a lot because people are like, how do you do all the things you do? I was <laughs> like, well, I delegate a lot. So yeah. So the virtual assistant company is run um, almost completely by, by someone else, although I still do have a hand in it. Um, so I, uh, uh, I guess you could call me a, somewhat of a serial entrepreneur at this point. Yeah. When, so before, just so people know, before we, you know, have people on the podcast, we always have a form that the guest fills out, like, Hey, what's your official bio? And I was reading your bio. I was like, Oh, wow. Like she's got her hands in, in a bunch of different stuff, like very cool. And, uh, and I love to, I love to hear that. I love to hear the progression of, of businesses and how you go from, you know, one thing to the other. And it sounds like, yeah, delegation is a big key for that for you. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so let's get into you know what we're really going to talk about. Obviously, um, COVID and the pandemic is something that is still really high on people's minds and has really changed the landscape of marketing and how therapists do business. Um, so I'm really excited to hear some of the the tips that you have for us um, as you know how how did you do it before for a group practice? How do you do it now? And so kind of let you take the lead on that. Okay, great. Yeah, I would say, um, so before COVID started, um, we did a variety of different kinds of marketing. And so what I tell people is that in my mind, marketing kind of falls into two broad categories. So there's digital marketing and there's more in-person um, face-to-face type marketing. And so right. I always recommend to people, you have to do both. You can't just do one or the other. I think a lot of people want to do one or the other and ignore the other one, but I don't think in today's world that works. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I feel like we had a good um, kind of combination of the both. So definitely did a lot of work on my SEO for my website. Um, we had a, a, a good following on our Facebook page, um, had some good traction with running Facebook ads, um, had started running some Google ads just in the beginning of 2020. Um, 
and um, then we had the, you know, once in a while we'd give talks in the community or we'd show up to events where there would be other potential referral sources. Um, just, you know, maintaining those connections, going to doctor's offices and dropping off marketing materials and, mm -hmm. you know, nurturing those relationships. So um, I think it depends a lot on what your specialties are in your group practice. Um, and that will help inform what kind of marketing you want to do. So for us, because we specialize in women's issues, um, and especially maternal mental health, which there's no other big practice in my area that really specializes in that. So we try to make a lot of connections with like OBGYNs and, and places like that, where obviously our, our ideal client is going to be yeah. um, often. So, so I think that's one key thing to remember as well is just like, you have to think about where is your ideal client in the community and, and that will help inform your marketing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and have you seen, a, you know, just a, a drop in, well, have you seen a drop in like your, your focus more towards the digital over the, you know, networking face to face? I mean, there's a lot less going on as far as events and stuff like that, obviously. So how have you kind of weathered that transition? Yeah, so I think when quarantine started, it became clear very quickly that like, obviously, there weren't really many opportunities to network anymore. Um, I mean, I think some things, um, you know, kind of popped up online, you know, people that used to have in person events are now having online events. And I did a couple of those, but um, it just became very clear that, you know, because everyone was at home, they were on social media. Uh, maybe on social media a lot more than they used to be, <laughs> or maybe yeah. on Google a lot longer than they used to be. Um, and so I really did a lot to um, make sure that we were kind of maximizing those channels. Um, and it was interesting too, to see kind of like the shifts that were happening because yeah you know, we have a really good um, kind of network of doctor's offices that will refer to us on a regular basis. And it was like when COVID first started, we tried to reach out to them to say, hey, we're still here. We're, yeah. we're you know, doing telehealth. And they were just like, oh my gosh, like, we're so overwhelmed. Like they couldn't even like, they didn't even have time to, you know, to listen. Whereas in the past, obviously they appreciated that they knew we were a, a place to send their patients, but yeah. there was just so much going on. They were so overwhelmed. They just, they couldn't even compute that at that time. Right. Um, since then enough time has passed that we've gone back to them to say like, Hey, we're still here. We're still doing telehealth. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, everything's a little calmer now and they have started sending us referrals again, but that's great. It was just kind of interesting how that, you know, it's almost like the whole landscape kind of shifted under our feet and we had to like very quickly, um, you know, change things up to yeah. meet people where they were. Yeah, that that's a good reminder for people to just kind of be persistent and not just, you know, you, you, re you reached out at the beginning and everybody was overwhelmed, you know on both sides, like everybody, <laughs> you know, everybody was like, what does this look like changing their business, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I, I remember those first few weeks too, just figuring out like, what, how is this all going to work? You know, being home, I work from home, but then now my wife is home, a three-year-old and his school's closed. Everyone's going through that stuff. But you know, now that sort of, not that the dust has settled, but people have kind of gotten used to this new normal. It's great time to reach back out to those referral sources and just continue to just remind people you never know what's gonna you know come from that yeah I think too a lot of people who aren't familiar with our line of work like didn't realize that we shifted to telehealth like I think some people just thought like oh well you're closed we're like yeah no we never closed like yeah. we're we're here we just switched to telehealth so I think yeah. getting that message out too was important yeah yeah for sure cool what what else has sort of changed for you in your practice with covid as far as marketing goes yeah so i think that um the three things that i was looking at um when we were looking at how to change the marketing strategy was realizing that your ideal clients pain points might have changed mm -hmm. you know you might have um 
you know, your ideal client may have been a stressed out mom um, who had anxiety. And now, obviously, that's going on. But maybe, too, now she's having marital issues because she and her spouse are home all day. <laughs> right. <together. laughs> um, yeah. So her pain point has changed. So looking at, like, do I need to change my marketing to reflect that? Um, and doing like we did a lot of like blog posts about COVID and how people are coping and what you know difficulties are coming up for people because of COVID because obviously now it's like this whole new stressor has yeah. appeared in some people's lives um, and so then the other thing I thought about was like well what are the barriers now to them attending treatment and so for my clients especially it was finances obviously the economy tanked and a lot of people got laid off um yeah. and so finances were at the forefront of their mind like can i even afford to go to therapy right now mm -hmm. the second one was time especially for our ideal client is usually a mom um yeah. and now your kids are home you're trying to homeschool them like when do you have a spare minute in the day to even do therapy and then the third one um was just sort of like the intimidation factor with telehealth. So, you know, most people, when they think about going to therapy, they think of going into an office. Most people don't think like, oh, I could go to therapy online. Like we know that from, you know, searches of online therapy on Google are just so much lower than other types of searches. So, um, so that was the other thing is like, we had to do a lot of like education with our yeah. clients about, Hey, this is what it is. And this is how it's confidential. And it's so easy to get on and you just click here and you're, you know, you're on the, the secure platform. And so I think that was a lot of, um, you know, just a lot of work putting together like videos and, just trying to be very clear with um, clients, like how easy it was so that they weren't intimidated and weren't like yeah. avoiding go coming to therapy just because of like the technology issue. Yeah, that's really good. That's, that's a really good point about, you know, making it like making it as easy as possible for someone to jump in and not have all these reasons like, Oh, it doesn't work or it's going to be this way or that way. People have these sort of perceptions in their mind. And I think that the, that goes for any type of marketing you're doing. You know, if you're promoting a course or something like that, um, there's thing, there's reasons why people don't want to join. There's reasons why people don't want to do something. So kind of remove all of those barriers by educating your ideal client. I think that's great. Um, that's, really just a great idea just uh, you can do a whole series of blog posts about those different reasons why someone wouldn't want to <laughs> you know do online therapy and then you can just answer all those questions uh, right up front and yeah. I think too just to just encourage people listening like it, it does sound like a lot of work like you said you did some videos and blog posts um, but it seems like you know, things have now changed pretty permanently. So we can kind of take that to just, to, you know, people have time to, to get this content out there. And it's a great idea to uh, include that on your website. Yeah, I think that made a big difference for us too. And um, one thing we did as well was we added a, um, like a live chat box to the website. Oh, cool. And it was funny because um, I use Brighter Vision for my, for my website. And they, um, I emailed them like, hey, can you add this to my website? And they were like, uh, we can, but I don't know why you would, because it would be, it might be like a lot of work <laughs> to like answer all <laughs> yeah, of those like right. messages that you get. And yep. we had such a huge rejection in the amount of clients that were calling when quarantine first started that I was just like, I don't care. I'll try yeah. it, you know? Yeah. So we did try it and it actually does help convert clients because clients can communicate with my admin through there and it, and like, they like just have a question or, or whatever. And she answers them right away. And she said it actually has been successful with scheduling clients. So oh, yeah. I'm happy with it. I don't know if, you know, when we do get quite a bit busier, if it's going to get too unmanageable, but it's an right. idea if it's, you know, if you're kind of hurting for clients right now. Yeah, that's a great idea. I'm super curious to hear a little more about that. So like, are you seeing new client, you're getting new clients through that chat feature? Yeah. Great. What types yep. of, what types of questions do they, do they ask when they, when they use the live chat? Um, that 
is a good question. I don't know exactly because, like I said, my admin manages that piece of it. But um, I think a lot of times it's just like your common questions like, do you take my insurance? Right. Do you have an opening? You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's just another just a touch point that you can have with people. That's a great idea. Love that. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people get intimidated by actually calling yeah and and we have that contact form on our website but the obviously the chat is like a little bit more immediate yeah absolutely yeah i think it depends on the person's personality too sometimes it's just so easy like oh live chat let me ask this question that i have right now you know yeah what uh what technology are you using for that live chat? yeah we're using a software called pure chat and it was free um i'm sure you know there's probably some cool souped up version that you can get <laughs> that would cost money yeah, but like all those just, technology things it's yes yeah. we just have the very basic version and it you know works great very cool yeah i've yeah. used a i've used another one called olark i believe is one um that okay. was really really simple and easy to use and they also have a you know free branded version and then you you pay to remove their logo or whatever but it works pretty good uh-huh cool nice all right. So what, what else, what else can you share with us about marketing during this COVID? Yeah, I think, um, you know, what was interesting is that when I first started the practice, we had started like an email newsletter and we were, you know, collecting email addresses from, um, just people visiting the website or whatever. Yeah. And, um, I, I had never really seen a clear return on investment with it. And we just sort of like, got away from doing it it just sort of fell off um i think when i changed assistants we just kind of didn't keep doing it so we decided to resurrect that especially because there were just so many changes happening um and it's still not super clear how much that has an influence on people um you know calling or whatever but i think one thing that i have noticed and i've been talking to practice owners all over the country because of doing the business consulting. And a lot of them have said that they had clients from the past call them up and say, Hey, I'm, you know, really struggling with it, with the pandemic. Like, can I come back to see you? And so I think if you, you know, if you already have some type of email list, even if you haven't emailed them for a while, it might be worthwhile to send something out again, just to say, Hey, we're still yeah. open. We're doing telehealth. Like, you might be struggling right now. And even if you just feel like you need to come in a couple times just to kind of learn some ways of coping with everything that's happening, like yeah. I'm available, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just another touch point because you never know. I've seen this in my business. So you never know when someone's going to respond to one of those emails. Um, yeah, I send out emails every week for, for this podcast. Um, and I have some people who will just respond, like they'll have a question that's got nothing to do with the podcast episode, but they'll just respond to that email that says, you know, this week's podcast is about blah, blah, blah. And they just ask a question. It's like, they, they see those emails, they don't interact with them. And then maybe months, months down the road, they respond to it and it could turn into a client. It's just another, right. another way to remind people that you exist. Right. Yeah. And I think it's good to um, just, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just kind of take content that we've already created, either blog posts or things we've put out on social media and just sort of stick three or four things in there and say, you know, it doesn't take very long. So I think it's, you know, worthwhile to do just to see what comes out of it. Yeah. So you said you, you had an email list you were building and then you just kind of stopped focusing on it, but you were still able to use those emails from the past. Yes. Yep. Great. Cool. All right. So what, what else? Yeah, I think um, another thing that I heard from other practice owners, but also encouraged my own therapist to do was um, to reach out again, but you know, past clients who they had a relationship with just to send a quick email, just to say, Hey, I haven't seen you in a while, but just wanted to let you know I'm here in case you need me. Um, I think that was pretty powerful in terms of um getting clients to fill their caseload back up like i said it was a little bit bad timing um for my practice because we had just expanded and just hired a bunch of new people all at once mm -hmm. and so obviously they had the expectation that like yeah they were going to be building up their caseload but then 
our new client calls dropped off like 90% the first week of quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. So we normally get 60 calls and we got six. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Talk about, um, you know, a little bit of panicking and yeah. trying, trying to figure out, okay, what can we do? And I'm very like, you know, I think there were a lot of practice owners who just like wanted to pull the covers over their head and just be like, okay, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just yeah. going to wait till this is over. And right. I'm very much like, okay, this is just like a new challenge. Yeah. What a new set do? of problems yeah. that we have to solve. Like what do, yeah. How can we fix this? Um, I love solving problems. So that was like, yeah, I just went into like fix it mode and like That's just great. learned all of these things through trial and error. And um you know, there's some things that we did that didn't work. Like we tried to call the schools and like the local colleges and universities to tell them like that we were, we were open and available, available for telehealth, but like nobody was there. <laughs> <laughs> nobody was responding. Nobody was responding. Yeah. So we left messages, but obviously that was kind of a dead end. Um, one thing that um, I wanted to mention too, that kind of came out of this whole situation um, that was actually a really cool silver lining was in my area, telehealth um, was covered sometimes here and there by certain insurance plans. Um, I would say the majority of our clients um, use their insurance to come see us. And the week, you know, the first week of quarantine like they all changed their benefit structure to cover telehealth and some of them even wow. waived co-pays and waived deductibles um which was amazing so we were able yeah. to very easily switch to doing everything online that's great because insurance made that change yeah so um now i think you know just for the future, I think sort of the floodgates are open. I think they're always going to cover telehealth. I don't think that's going to go away. Um, and so it gave us an opportunity then to really market to the whole state of Pennsylvania and not yeah. just our little local area, because I figured out that, you know, in terms of getting somebody to actually come to an appointment, if they have to travel longer than like a half an hour, they're probably not coming yeah right <laughs> or they're not going to be very consistent yeah so obviously that's a a much smaller population than the entire state that you can serve um mm -hmm. through telehealth so then i had to start thinking about well how do we market to anybody in the state you know yeah. which is humongous and millions and millions of people so just trying to learn how to do that um with google ads and learning how to do that with facebook ads i ended up hiring somebody to help me um, because it was just, um, you know, something that I felt like there was more of the, the tech side and it was obviously a little bit um, it just kind of taking it to another level now to advertise to anybody in the whole state. So, yeah. yeah, so that's been interesting just to see like what is coming out of that and um, you know, how, we're going to continue doing that in the future. Cause like I said, I think it's kind of here to stay. Yeah. That's something that's really been coming up with a lot of the consultations I've been doing and new clients that we've been seeing coming in uh, for like our SEO services. They're like, Hey, we don't think we're going to have a physical location anymore. So now we can market to the whole state of Texas. So what do we got to do? <laughs> so that's definitely, that's happening all over now. I see it all over the place. Yeah, which I think is great because, I mean, especially in my state, um, obviously there's highly populated areas like Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, and then there's um, very rural areas where there is almost no mental health services. And so to be yeah. able to bring services to those folks as long as they have like <coughs> a device and a, you know, internet connection is amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so you mentioned, uh, I'm curious just to hear a little bit more about this. You mentioned like Google ads and Facebook ads. Um, what are some of the things that you're doing to reach those people? Is it just targeting the larger cities kind of like, you know, sweeping through with your ads? Yeah, I actually had somebody um, helping me with this as well, because it was something that I realized, you know, it's important to kind of hire a professional 
who knows what they're doing because Google ads can be get pretty expensive and you definitely yeah. don't want to waste a bunch of money, like guessing at what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yes. So opening it up. Yeah. To like advertising in like the larger, um, more populated areas of the state and just sort of identifying those towns or those cities. Very cool. And is there, are there any things that you're doing on your website? You mentioned blogging, but is there anything beyond that that you're doing or you encourage people to do in order to reach a wider audience or just, you know, reach people with their online services? Yeah. I mean, I think that that's something I'm just kind of delving into now. Um, some of the changes that I've made so far is, um, like we got listed on the online counseling directory and like you could put the logo on there. I changed um, the therapist bios. So at the end it says, you know, this therapist works out of this office and can also see anybody in the state of Pennsylvania online. Mm -hmm. um, we always had an online therapy services page, um, but when this started, we really ramped it up. Um, and like added a lot more detail and made the video of how to log on to the platform, all of mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's, that's actually probably my goal um, for the next few months is to really figure out what are some other things that I can do so that it has more of like a statewide presence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Well, do you have any, any other tips that you want to share? We're just kind of hanging out. So I'm just like, whatever you got, I, whatever you got, I want to hear. But I also don't want to just keep putting you on the spot, but uh, yeah. this is all great stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I didn't cover um, just with all the things that we did. I think the only other thing was that I know when... Um, quarantine first started like there were website companies that were kind of recommending like making it really obvious on your website that you were available for telehealth and if you were like taking new clients or not taking new clients so like putting a bar atop of you know your website that could be seen on every page or having like a pop-up mm -hmm. box or something like that um so we have um not a pop-up box but in, in really big letters on the homepage it says like we are open you know for telehealth or accepting yeah. new clients so i think just being really obvious about that because i know that even as a um customer of like other businesses i like get annoyed when i go on their website and like i can't tell like are you open yeah. are you closed are you yep. did you change something did you you know what i mean like yep. i was looking for a restaurant to order some food for um, takeout and it said nothing about like if they were open or if like you could just do like curbside pickup or yep. you know I was just like oh okay I don't even <laughs> want to deal with this I'll just go to the next place <laughs> yeah I've had the same experience or times on google maps different than their website yeah I'm with you yep yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just make it really clear right away that you are, you're available. Um, cause you never, I mean, you never know which pages people are going to land on, what they're going to see and just, yeah, just really uh, over communicate with your website users for sure. Right. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Allison. This is super helpful. Um, I know a lot of people are going to take some really great tips that they're going to be able to apply to their website and businesses right away. Um, can you, can you just share with, uh, everyone where they can find you? Should they want to learn a little bit more about you and what you do? Sure. So I'm on the practice of the practice website. Um, I have a page on there. If you click on the work with us tab, which is on the right hand side, I think I have a, a page on there and then my email address, uh, which is Allison, A-L-I-S-O-N at practice of the practice.com. Uh, I also forgot to mention at the beginning that I, I started a podcast. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, called Grow a Group Practice. So we actually launched it on like March 12th. So it got a little overshadowed by <laughs> <laughs> COVID-19. Yeah. But um, yeah, but people, are, yes, so people are starting to listen to it now. And it, it's cool to hear um, feedback from people about it. So you know, if you're, if you're starting in group practice or, or looking to grow your group practice, definitely check it out. 
Yeah, absolutely. And also you had a, a, a webinar with Whitney as well, right? About COVID. Yeah. So Whitney Owens is uh, my fellow business consultant through Practice of the Practice. And we did a whole webinar um, on just marketing tips and kind of how we pivoted our practice um, when COVID started. So um, that was something we just did for our kind of like, um, like paid membership community, but um, I put it together for your audience um, if they wanted to watch it. Um, there's tons of good tips in there. So Awesome. Thank you so much for that. So we'll have the links in the show notes uh, for this episode. This is episode number 53. So privatepracticeelevation.com slash five three. You'll find all that good stuff. Well, thank you so much for your time, Allison. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel.